I hear the doorbell and open the door. It's the UPS man. I'm sorry, ma'am. I just hit your dog and killed her. <laughs> Maddie was an eight-year-old Wheaton Terrier, a perfect dog who did nothing but give love and take love. I collapsed to the floor sobbing. When I can finally stand up, I call Maddie's breeder. I know getting another dog isn't going to make me miss Maddie less, but I suffer with severe depression and I'm terrified that without a distraction, the void left by Maddie will push me into the abyss. The breeder says he's not breeding anymore and then he says, would you take a rescue? I'll take anything, I hear myself say. The next day I'm at the rescue. The director's in the pasture with Milo waiting for me. Milo is a beautiful, sandy-colored, sphinx-like dog with soulful eyes and white, oversized paws. He seems mellow and lovable. But a few hours after we get home, he starts barking and growling. Then he bites my son twice, once on the back and once on the wrist. As I'm wrapping the bandage around his bloody wrist, my son says, I bet they sedated Milo at the rescue before you got there. As soon as he says it, it's obvious. I am so pissed. I am taking this monster back. But then I picture Milo at the rescue in his cage, and I know I can't do it. I am such a loser. I was so desperate to find a distraction from Maddie's death that I was duped. And now I am stuck with this horrible dog. But I can't go on like this, so as much as I don't want to, I sign up for dog school. A week later, we're in the parking lot of what a good dog, exclamation point. <laughs> in the back of my station wagon, Milo is howling and thrashing as all the blonde Lululemon moms and their blonde dogs are staring at us from the grass. At our What a Good Dog School exclamation point interview, the woman told me to return Milo, but I still couldn't. But now I'm slinking under the steering wheel mortified. Two women in matching green jackets come to the car, and flanking Milo, they lead us to a room off of the main room. This is where you'll stay. You aren't coming into the classroom, Mary, the owner of the school says, before heading off. The other woman stays with Milo and me, aiming a bottle, a spray bottle mixture of water and vinegar aimed at Milo's eyes to briefly blind him if he misbehaves. I don't think I could feel worse. But after the chirpy moms go around introducing themselves and their dogs, Mary calls me in. Milo and I and spray bottle woman go into the room. <laughs> I hang my head and say, I'm Anne and this is my rescue dog, Milo. All the perfect moms pull back in their seats, hugging their dogs. Mary says, yes, Milo has outsmarted three families in 18 months. I hang my head lower, even more humiliated. It's official. Everyone's heard it. Milo is a reject. For three weeks, I trudge back to what a good dog, exclamation point. And for three weeks, I'm shunned, stuck alone in a room with Milo and Spray Bottle Woman. I am so annoyed. Finally, the fourth week, Mary calls us in. I hear a collective gasp as Milo and I, along with Spray Bottle Woman, come through the door. I have no idea what Milo's going to do, and I cringe with dread as I lead my pack across the room. When I get to the empty spot beside Mary, I stop and turn. Milo, sit, I say. And my dog locks his gaze into mine and snaps his butt down with the precision of a Westminster show dog. <laughs> my heart soars. I am so proud of him, proud of both of us. And looking into his sparkling eyes, I realized for the first time since I've had him, 
probably the first time in his life Milo is proud of himself. And for the rest of class, he's the star pupil. Afterwards, to celebrate, we go to the woods. I open the trunk of my station wagon, and Milo's sitting at attention, his gaze tethered to mine. Milo, I say. He looks at me with hope. I love you. And his lion king tail does a 180-degree swish. I feel myself falling in love. Thank you.